Hello folks, how you all doing? This is Khan Ulrich coming to you with another Company of Heroes 2 1v1. This one is between a set of friends here spawning in the east. It is the OKW forces of El Padre. And it appears to be a good chap he's on good terms with over here in the west playing the UKF. It is Storm Panther. Now, El Padre is bringing in very unsurprising commanders. He, of course, has Luftwaffe ground forces. He's got spe uh, scavenged doctrine. Excuse me, I was going to say special operations. But he doesn't look quite so dapper because of those goggles. And he's also got breakthrough doctrine. So three commanders that we expect to see out of him. And he indeed is even opening up very, very standard. Storm Panther, by his own reckoning, is bringing a slightly different set. He's bringing in mobile assault, maybe not so different there. Um, Vanguard Operations, maybe not the most different there, but it's this tax Support Regiment that we don't often see. It'd be kind of nice um, to actually see how that plays out here. I don't know if that's going to be the case. There's a quick note for people out there as we do see the opening moves, just kind of territory being grabbed. Why do you always see the OKW immediately rush out... Um, Volks and then Kubel. Well, yeah, it's true that it gives you a good uh, all-around firepower, but it's also the cheapest way um, to use all of your initial manpower without having anything left over. It gets you three squads on the map, and you can see right now that um, the Volks Grens keep guys entertained at long range. The Sturm Pioneers are able to put up all the defenses, and this Kubelwagen can kind of scamper around grabbing territory, and that's really all he needs to do. We're going to see a transition to a, um, another Volksgrenadier coming out soon enough. But Storm Panther also has a Maxim. I believe that Maxim, yep, is in this garrison in the center part of the map. The map, of course, is Kaladni Firma, and that is going to be um, a, definitely a point of contention, as we all well know. Now, one thing to note is these sandbags uh, will not be a legitimate option with the upcoming Winter Balance Patch 1.6. I am troubleshooting my uh, play with that particular patch, and hopefully I'll get you a couple of games with that pretty darn soon. In the meantime, the Kubelfagen, as well as one of these squads of Volks Grenadiers, is entertaining this British infantry section from long range. And Storm Panther has not decided to really go to a, uh, anything else just yet. He's going to go immediately up to a super, super fast platoon command post, rushing that out in under 2 minutes and 30 seconds, so it's pretty, pretty darn quick. Um, but... Does he really gain a whole lot by doing that? I'm not sure I necessarily agree with it. Okay, his opponent will throw down a couple of mines in the south, as well as some barbed wire here and there. Uh, but it continues that this infantry section just gets more and more heat placed upon them. Now, to combat that Kubelwagen that will scamper around and do pretty darn well, actually, against these infantry sections, he's going to call in an armor-piercing sniper. And that guy with his boy's anti-tank rifle is going to cause some other trouble for these boys up here. But, um... Tch. Now, surprisingly enough, we haven't seen a truck come out yet from El Padre. I am truly, truly surprised by that. Ah, interesting. We're going to see a rush actually happening over here against this Vickers. Vickers is resetting, trying to bring these Volks under fire. They'll do decently well with it, suppressing those guys, but they were behind green cover. How they get pinned in one... Burst of fire. That's savage right there, that is. Now, Storm Pires are going up next to the house, trying their best to cause some casualties in the meantime. And the Vickers machine gun itself can't actually get a line on what's going on here. Uh, unfortunately for the Storm Pires, though, this armor-piercing sniper is going to pick off three guys really, really quickly here. Boom, boom, boom. Three headshots. Uh, but we are going to see uh, infantry section from the north and the contested... Where was that? That was, I guess, in this area here, finally getting pushed back. But by the same token, we are finally going to see El Padre bringing in an SWS. So the question for me, I suppose, is whether or not the SWS ends up being the Batacoop headquarters or mechanized regiment headquarters. At this time, given the current fuel levels, I kind of expect to see a mechanized regiment. Um, although I wouldn't necessarily agree that that's the best opportunity that's here. Also surprising, we are going to see this armor-piercing snipers inside this house, this garrison. And now he's got to do a lot of work. He's microing this super well, though. Hopping in and out, just trying to take advantage of all that firepower that can come out here. Folks, Gren's on retreat. Can they take it out? He's getting away barely. No, they default to the closest target. And the armor-piercing sniper makes it away, if only barely. It is worth noting... 
that the uh, Germans have managed to lose 65 tickets already, um, though they have stabilized right now at 1-1 one to one in terms of VP holding. And El Padre, yep, he is going to go for that mechanized regiment. So, um, apparently Strong Panther can't believe it himself. I have three windows. Oh, okay, maybe stop with this, this engagement up here. Good question. I'm not entirely sure about that. I need to look into the garrison, um, not physics so much, but the garrison stats and what they add in terms of cover. Um, if anybody knows that off the top of their heads, I'd be very interested in hearing that, so please do let me know. But nevertheless, who cares about whether or not he's winning the window fight out of garrisons? He is using this opportunity, the Sturm Panther that is, to pick up the German-held VP. And for some strange reason, neither players decided to go for the southern one. And indeed, everything is either closer to the north or back in base. Folks, Grenadiers, um, I'm not sure if they're coming under fire or what that is. No, that's not that's not anything, that's not anything. Maybe they hopped out, threw down the incendiary grenade and got back inside the hut. I do not know. Either way, uh, they're coming under a fair amount of firepower now, and that armor-piercing sniper is the boogeyman on the move. It looks like we're going to see an AEC as well coming out for Strem Panther. Um, which is going to be countered rather nicely, I would say, by the Rakettenwerfer that is lurking around the northern part of the field. Now, where is that guy now? He is so hidden, I can't even find him. There he is. Southern part of the field, in the middle of the pitch. And he's going to come under fire really, really quickly if the Germans are not careful. But no, instead it's going to be this Volksgren squad over here that's already sorely abused. Down to about 15, no, probably less than that. 12, 13% health. Not too solid there, are we? All right, but it's going to be a Panzer II coming out for El Padre, so it's going to be a question of who can be the more annoying gadfly. And I use that term in full knowledge, knowing what that means. Uh, we will see in the, in the meantime, though, this armor-piercing sniper is going to support these Royal Engineers, at least for a, a small bit. Until getting chased away by the Kubel and Strumpios. Now my question is, Strumpios should be able... Oh no, never mind folks, it's not going to happen. AEC is up here, and that's a major, major issue. But the Germans have taken the lower VP, bringing it back to 1-1 to one again. And there is that Panzer II. The question is, can the Panzer II snoop and skulk around? Because one-on-one, -on -one, the AEC is more than a match for that Panzer II. Seems the first mo uh, first major concern for him is to find this infantry section to the south. He does find his targets, but he kind of ignores it almost immediately. AEC, in the meantime, is going to find our little friend here. And the Rakatenberg will get a nice couple of shots off into the AEC as well, bringing him down to about two-thirds health. Now, unfortunately, the Panzer II is going to be forced to kind of hustle back and forth. He's going to have to go around onto the AEC, and I don't know what his plan is. Because I'm going to see Armor-Piercing Sniper puts around into the backfield here. But a Panzer Faust comes out, damages the engine on that AEC. So my question is, will we see the, either a dead Sniper or a dead AEC? Um, not immediately, no. Now, AEC is going to get away, but the Armor-Piercing Sniper will not. He will not, and that's a okay trade, as long as the Panzer II didn't die in vain. In vain, rather. Strem Panther, in the meantime, is going to go for that mobile assault regiment. You do know that thing has the infiltration commandos. We're going to see the land mattress and a, four, and a few CPs. Um, but for the time being, but for the time being, he's doing pretty well without the help. And wow, the British actually lost their vickers on retreat as well. So two quick kills coming out for El Padre. And he takes a slight leg up on his buddy here, Strem Panther. However, though, those infiltration commanders can wreck the day of any support weapon in about 15 seconds flat if they get close enough. Um, if, of course, that if they get close enough is a big, big if. Now, in the north, in the meantime, those poor Volksgrenadiers have run across a mine that was placed, and I'm wondering, oh, do we still have the other mine here? Yes, we do. So the next time we see a German in the area, expect a big boom, a fountain of earth, and a very, very effusive letter home. Because they died. I mean, that should be kind of obvious, I think, at this point. AEC, in the meantime, back in base, getting repaired. 
Um, and a second armor piercing sniper is being called in. Oh, interestingly enough, these infiltration commandos are going to go mono e mono e mono with the Volks, excuse me, the Shrempios. And I thought for half a second the Shrempios had them. But no, they decide that discretion is the better part of valor, and both combatants flee with about the same amount of health. Which to me is just super, super surprising. Armor piercing sniper coming forward. Um, he doesn't have a critical shot, thankfully. But I do believe that's exactly what happened to our poor friend, the Panzer II. And that Kubel is not content to take fire all day. He's not. He ain't. Nobody got time for that. Um, and a very, very quick kill on this poor Volksgrenadier in the middle of this field. He better run. And there he goes. He's like a jackrabbit. He's out of there. Infantry section in the meantime being forced out of the garrison by incendiary grenade and both guys again escape super quickly because neither one of them wants to get picked off. AEC is back in position and El Padre is starting to pay the price of not having a battle group headquarters and having the healing on his troops. It is worth noting though that um, he has gone for scavenge doctrine which means he can call in those Jaeger and infantry. He's using them to put pressure onto the sniper and bam takes that out says so two snipers gone for Sturm Panther. Very rare you see them in the first place. And one of the reasons you see it right now is why. Um, they get picked. They're very, very fragile. Now, Captured Vickers is putting pressure onto his AEC, but of course it's just a machine gun, so he's not going to do anything more than really scratch the paint. And the Raketten Burfer is going to slide around slowly to the north, but not quite going to manage the damage. Twelve minutes in, our German player is still down by a hundred tickets or more. Um, and indeed, it doesn't look like it's going to change in the immediate future. But this, for Captain Verfer, is trying to get super close. He's going to get at least one round off of the AEC. No, never mind. He puts it right into the dirt. He shoots like a girl. I don't actually think that, but you know, he's just, he just puts a round right in front of him. I don't even know how he managed that. There's no, there's not even a, a elevation there. It's as flat as a pancake. Kansas might be more. Um, more hills and valleys than that. And yet, despite the fact that this AEC is pushing back a good portion of the German army, um, and will continue to do so if the Germans are not careful here, is this a rush to throw a Panzerfaust into him? I don't know. But this is a giant mistake, I feel. Retreat, my friends, retreat. And yes, there they go. Milbaum going off, trying to pick off um, the Shrempios, and we'll do a decent job. Um, geez, there go the Strumpires. They're running back to base and just as quickly as the Brits were sent packing. So too are the Germans sent packing very, very quickly after that. Now, here's that captured um, Vickers again. He's going to get abused pretty hardcore. Time to run. There he goes. He's motoring out of there. Question is, will the infiltration commanders be able to pick him off on retreat? The answer to that is no, my friends. Jaegers, in the meantime, kind of lurking forwards. Ooh, and a Flak Panzer is unlocked. We're going to see a Flak Panzer coming out, my Ostvin companions. We are also going to see that uh, Infiltration Squad has gone down. Uh, and not a moment too soon when you think about it, because the Germans are still bleeding VPs. Leona Lewis is bleeding love. These guys are bleeding VPs. Trying to do a bit of work against these Royal Engineers does push him back before this Vickers is taken out, and that's lucky there. Because now it means that that machine gun will make it away ever so quickly. But now, I wonder, this Flag Panzer should be able to match up pretty darn well with the AEC. Not perfectly, mind you. But he's also an infantry just murderer right there. He's a mass murderer. You're going to see that the Brits right now have only half the army size enemy infantry firing. of the OKW. We do see right there, AEC can penetrate barely the armor of the Ostvind, but not consistently and not doing any real damage. In the meantime, this Ostvind just continues racking up experience like crazy here. He did pretty darn well if he just actually put rounds into the AEC, but no, he's not going to. There we go, finally seeing that. The AEC has two stars of veterancy, which means he's going to get the mobility, and does he already have? No, he's got target tread, which is almost as bad for his opponent here. Quick reminder, target tread will allow him to slow or immobilize. Neither one is going to be a solid opportunity for El Padre. Ah, uh, but we are going to see ourselves a Cromwell coming out? Seems like a Cromwell tank to me. Yes, it is. In fact, a Cromwell. That back of the silhouette always kind of throws me a little bit. 
Alrighty, though. So, with the Brits pushed back moderately, not entirely, but moderately, the Germans have an opportunity to really take back some of this territory here, and are threatening to do so. Um, they are out in the open, um, so we're not gonna, things are not going to be too wonderful and gay for them, and indeed, we are going to see the Jaeger Light booking it out of there, because he's got to make it back for the train on time. Yikes, but this infantry section is getting brutalized again by the Ostvind. And that thing is just so darn good. I mean, it says effective against infantry and aircraft. No, it's not effective. Effective is taking out a model every now and again. That thing's a killer. And he's got to be, because here comes that Cromwell as well. Yikes. And the Raketenwerfer and basically infantry-based AT is not going to be enough to chase that Cromwell away. And so help me, my friends, um, those guys can be brutalized if they don't make it. But assault grenades coming out and just barely not taking out the machine gun doesn't manage to make it away in time. Cromwell engages the Ostvin, gets engaged it in turn by the Raketenwerfer, and uh, Sturm Panther decides it's time to back away here. Trying to throw rounds into these capturing Volksgrenadiers, but the Volksgrenadiers are too smart for him, apparently. Briefly, we are going to see another 2-1 to one in favor of the Brits, but it's not going to last too long, and indeed we are going to see that it goes back to 1-1 one to one all. But the Brits are still up 170 tickets, so not an inconsiderable amount here. Vickers doing a good job. No, excuse me, that was an MG-34. I kind of thought he picked up the Vickers from the Brits, and maybe he did. But he also has his own machine gun. Now, this poor uh, Kubel in the meantime will find himself picked on by the AEC. And there's the Vickers, that out-of-date machine gun. Poor, poor thing. But the Germans will get their VP. Now my question is, no good. The Vickers, I thought, I was like, please, don't go inside that house. It's murder, I guarantee you. So they're not going to do that. Uh, but what we will see is um, the Brits are going to attempt to build at least part of a sandbag here. And yikes, they're going to see the Raquette River chase back just for half a second, but might see a round coming in again. Nope, Cromwell takes a, a thundering hit. The infantry section hangs up just long to the decap, and then they back away delicately. And the AEC is not able to press home any advantage he might have gotten against his machine guns. And indeed, he didn't even take it out. Never mind, folks. Jaegers, uh, the couple surviving men in that squad are exchanging firepower with the infantry section here in the north. Jaegers will decide it's time to uh, go home pretty quickly. How are we doing on veterans? See, so Strand Panther has been hitting lost squads. A very, very unlucky thing. A product of seeing those two... Thanks. Are those two slaughtered armor piercing snipers? And the Cromwell goes down. Raketenwerfer lures in the a, a prey by using the Osman hanging out. It seems to dry, and then nope, a couple more rounds come in, and that was a misplay by Strempanther right there. He should definitely have been just repairing that guy like crazy before he started uh, getting rid of him. Rather sending it back into combat, I would imagine he doesn't want to get rid of him. Uh, mortar emplacement has now been put into play as well, and El Padre uh, very, very quickly will have the resources to take care of it, though. If not by going through in a dive all by his lonesome, which could be a legitimate option considering this uh, Ostwind right here will get put back into play. Um, could be a pretty solid opportunity for him. And first round's coming in, so the mortar pit decides to uh, unload a little bit early here. Alrighty, though. AEC has been repaired. That's a good thing right there for the Brits. But they are still losing tickets, and we'll continue to lose them for a little bit of time yet. Um, Austin hasn't transferred around to the north. He's got to help support this German infantry as it tries to lock down the AEC. But it's not easy to lock down that AEC. They're much more limber and, like, I'm not going to say productive, uh, but very, very quick vehicles. Enemy causing trouble, trying to take one of our points. The Cat and Verfers in the meantime are still out of play, and these Volksgrens are going to back away before those Royal Engineers take them out, or the AEC does as well. And with, right now, the Brits having no committed AT on the field outside, really, of this AEC, 
Um, Strand Panther's really got to be wondering what he's doing with his life right now. AEC is right for the taking. Black Panther's not going for it, though. Never mind, he's kind of just ducking in and ducking out. Never mind, he's going to put pressure on this mortar pit. That'd be a good idea. Yep, there we go. Grace is going to see the uh, mortar cease fire for a little bit of time. This Black Panther really should be throwing rounds into the AEC instead, and there we are finally going to see it happen. But it's being stopped by the fortifications for a little bit anyway, the mortar pit. Ah, uh, but a, a, an assisting Rakatenriffer comes in. Are we going to see one more shot coming out? No, we are not. We are not at all, my friends. We see a shoe mine coming down the middle part of the map uh, as the Germans take the northern and southern, excuse me, central and southern VPs. The northern one belongs to the UKF. And we are also going to see a Schwerer Panzer headquarters coming out the center part of the map, controlling this road junction, and indeed keeping the strategic point well and truly in control for the Germans. Now, this mortar pit has been taking some really good abuse here, mostly because of the Kettenberg for being placed super, super well. But the flood of Germans going the middle part of the field, and while not all of them are particularly vetted up, um, the Brits should be very, very worried, even bringing in that second Cromwell to assist. And indeed, there he goes. So we're going to see that Vickers get butchered. And that uh, Cromwell is trying very, very hard to get up to play to push back the Ostfind. Managed to do so for a minute or two. Here comes the Cindy Grenade, though, right back out. Going to put more pressure in on the mortar pit. And we'll continue to burn him down, but not too quickly. And there they go. The cockroaches, they sprint for the hills. Gonna burn out just before that brace wears off though too, which is probably a lucky thing for them. And dear mother of pearl, between that anti-aircraft gun and that anti-aircraft gun, infantry doesn't really have a chance here. Jaegers have been uh, pushed into the middle part of the field. They are trying to put pressure onto these Royal Engineers, I imagine. Not quite able to do so though. Maybe they're just trying to stop the cap for the time being, and that would be almost as good. And there we go. One goes down. We're going to see the other one go down. That could be a fully vetted up squad dying, but no, it's instead the Jaegers who suffer. And I'm booking it out of there super, super quickly. Now, the AEC makes the um, mistake of pushing forward and finding out, hey, look, that's where the Schwerer Panzer headquarters is. It gets hammered pretty hardcore, but as does the Ostfin as it tries to take an advanced position. Mortar pit in the meantime, both start putting pressure on the headquarters, and that's going to be a decent decision. Um, also, I'm kind of wondering why it's not being repaired by everything known to mankind. Um, and there it is, finally seeing that happen now. Osman's going to buy it here. I can almost feel it on my bones. But at least it looks like he'll die for a purpose. Oh no, wow, main gun destroyed on the Cromwell. Takes two Verketten shots to the face, and it gets hammered pretty hardcore. How is the barrage coming in, though? We're we going to see a dead mortar pit? I would almost hope so, because I hate to see a column happen. There we go. It goes down. The enemy have destroyed a forward emplacement. It's going to be another Cromwell coming out for Strem Panthers. He decides, just decides to just keep going all in. And it's kind of amusing to me, considering the fact that these Rakettans are not particularly mobile, and Claudine Ferma is not necessarily a constricting map. You, land mattress, you have you here. Go? You have here. Heck, you can even go further south to this area that no one ever seems to fight over. But it's going to be a land mattress being called in, folks, which means we're going to see ourselves a barrage onto this Schwerer Panzer headquarters. Because he, he knows where it is. He knows where the mech regiment is. He knows where a lot of stuff is. The question really is, is he going to do anything about it? Austin continues its repair job, and I'm wondering, are we going to see mechanics out of that? No, we haven't yet. So I'm wondering if El Padre is just trying to hang out for like a P4 or something of the sort there. Now, I was going to ask you about what you guys thought with the veterancy game was a long, long time ago, and now we're finally getting a chance to do that. AEC has three stars of veterancy. Oh no, it's not a, not a Cromwell. One of the Cromwells that was going to be um, made is no longer happening. Um, so we have several British squads that are fairly vetted up. By the same token though, we have a couple of um, British squads that are completely and totally not really combat effective. 
damned enemies trying to take a point. The Germans have their own particular case uh, are doing pretty darn well. Uh, they have one fully vetted up squad, which is going to be minimal at the moment. And we're seeing any kind of barrages coming up for the land mattress? Not yet. So maybe what he's trying to do is to lure out the anti-tank guns. There's one coming up right now. Putting around into them. But are we going to see a barrage in return? Shockingly enough, we are not. Interesting decision. Double charging grenades coming out and chasing away those Royal Engineers. And indeed, the Royal Engineers are trying their best to get inside this house, although I'm not sure how much good that's going to do them. Yes, they'll be able to suppress and abuse this Cromwell by quite a bit. Um, but it's not going to be enough to take him out. And indeed, we see Rakat perfect another shot in the Cromwell from the flank. And very, very slowly, we're seeing vehicles die, garrisons die. And the Austin yet again being chased back by superior tank forces. But no, guys, here's that shoe mine, and Strem Panther might smell a rat, because he's not going for it at all. That's what Catton sets up, though. He got a beautiful flank shot here. No, because he crewed instead, so unlucky, unlucky, unlucky. And there we go. Now we're finally going to see this round starting to impact. Looking to take out that Schreiber Panzer headquarters, and if he does, that could be a significant loss for the Germans. But for the time being, it doesn't seem like he's too concerned about it, which is shocking beyond all measure. Both Grenadiers managed to take one shot at the AEC, and then the Rakettenwerfer, sneaky, sneaky Rakettenwerfer, hides behind some bush bushes and bushwhacks the AEC. That guy is gone. He is never coming back, James. Interestingly enough, we're also going to see a trench coming out. Haven't seen one of these in a while. Being brought into play here by the Brits in the center part of the map. And has this been repaired yet? No, it's not. But the pack four, uh, excuse me, Rakettenwerfer has been retaken, and that's a nice solid thing right there. Did a pretty good work onto that Rakettenwerfer even as it retreats. Nevertheless, El Padre has managed to close the distance quite a bit, 318 to 347. Um, what had been a very, very big British lead has now been shrunken. As you can see, only 30 VPs. As well, we're going to see the MG34 has a good field of fire. However, he's not being showing it right now, but these guys can't see them, and he can't, can't be seen in return. But Strand Panther just continues to keep going all in with these Cromwells, which is just a very, very weird decision for me. And machine guns are going to find themselves dueling just a tiny bit. Black Panther as well is going to find itself outgunned yet again. Ah, and Cinderia grenades. There we go. A nice, lovely bit of frying going up on those Brits. And that Vickers is taken out. Enemy threatening a capture point. It's been capped out too, so very interesting decision there. Volksgrenz trying to capture a point, but get run down over, which is really, really frustrating to me how effective that crush is. Now, Land Mattress is not quite able to bring in another volley just yet, but you know what? That gives time for this Rakett for first to do some work against the Cromwells if they've kept taking shots. But no, it appears that that thing is a sight blocker and you can't get any kind of vision there. And the Volksgrenz have just gone down. That was a decently vetted up group. The Huns have 300 points at the moment. Another round of fire comes out from the land mattress, but not really that much damage being done. Now, there's damage being done. This uh, Royal Engineer squad is trying to get back home. They are homeward bound, my friends, and they have left two men behind and 80% of their health as well. Cromwell, in the meantime, are charging forward, coming under fire from the Shire Panzer headquarters. And how it's a barrage comes down, looks like he's just trying to delay until that Panther comes out. So he drops 180 munitions and doesn't achieve anything with it. It's just going to be ka -chow. Takes out the church, so I'm sure somebody's going to hell for that one. But it's not going to be me, so I don't think I care that much. Panther, in the meantime, is kind of coming through. Takes incidental firepower from the off map call in and I am wondering how brave he feels. Mech Regiment has still not called in there. 
um, what you call them here, mechanics. The Panther uh, announces his presence with a nice thunderous round that brings that Cromwell down by quite a bit. Assisted by the Raketenwerfer, it seems that El Padre's troops are almost unstoppable. Of course, the tickets would suggest differently, but that's just a function, I would say, of territory control. Um, Germans are going to go down again on a two-to-one cap at the very least. I um, mean, indeed, I think it's going to be, yep, almost exactly a two-to-one cap um, within about 10 seconds or so. More mines keep going down. It seems these boiler engineers have not had enough of that, um, which is a little bit surprising, because I would think that they would be much more willing to create things like, uh, no, never mind, I guess a, a good minefield is probably a good idea at this point. The Storm Panther is definitely able to utilize the munitions to their fullest. 31 minutes in, though, 261 to 347. And if you folks, hold on for just a second, please. No, actually, guys, thanks so much for the indulgence. I know it didn't really feel like any time has passed for you. Um, I mentioned this in another video. I Down just moved to a new to place. Um, and uh, it's quite toasty whenever I record here. So I have two windows open, even though it's the depth of winter right now, January 21st, as I record this. Jaegers in the middle part of the field get hammered by this Cromwell again. This guy's having a lot of luck taking them out from long range. Didn't also mention this, by the way, you see a six-pounder coming out for the Brits. Um, not that I'm sure it's going to do too much of an immediate effect, which is probably lucky because uh, definitely want to see those German tanks going down, not do it. At least, you know, not without a fight. Meantime, though, we are going to see Panther is prowling forward, trying it around down range in either the six-pounder or that nasty, nasty Cromwell, but it's not going to happen for him. Doesn't even manage to tickle his opponent. And indeed, we are going to see a land mattress instead throwing rounds way back downtown. It can impact just a couple here and there on the Shreve Panzer headquarters, but shouldn't bother it overly much. And indeed, instead we're going to see the, oh my gosh, Panther has come up against one Cromwell and it's the newer, less vetted up one. And with a Raketan yet again, we just see these anti-tank guns being used so, so well. Shrimp Panther, in the meantime, is going to throw out some infiltration commandos, and I do dearly hope, yep, there goes the Raketan for fur. He is going to make it away safely. Might drop a crew member on retreat. No, he does not. But it was close, so ladies and gentlemen, it was close. The Argus, in the meantime, infantry section is moving to the center part of the field, pushing back the other Raketan for pretty easily, for obvious reasons. A capture point is being and in the overrun. south, we're also going to notice that this Ostfin has supported a machine gun taking out control from the Brits in the middle part of the field. Well, not in the southern part of the field, excuse me. I'm looking at the middle part of the field right now. So, taking another look at veterancy here. Um, this land mattress continues not to have really any kind of veterancy. In the north, we will see these infiltration commanders are going to get shot to pieces if not too uh, careful here. Good news. They're the decent enough. Never mind. I said they're decent enough in a short range firefight, but usually when they have everybody else there at the same time. And I just hear a. Nope. Well, there go the infiltration commanders on retreat in the meantime. They will come under fire from a Bren toting infantry section and will be forced back themselves, but not overly concerning for the Germans. In the meantime, though, these folks going to Deers are out in the open. I'm not sure why they're hanging out here doing their thing. Taking fire from two different sources of tanks, as well as the infantry right in front of them. Panther says, you know what? Stop picking up my friends. So I can buy with a little help from them. As Raket Verfer is moving super, super close and decides it's probably better to watch the animals from farther away and not fall into the feeding tank. Ready for all. Order. Machine gun? Ah, yes, machine gun. There we go. I was like, why are we seeing that? Vickers is going to pin or suppress that both squads of Royal Engineers here and will announce in the meantime its tender resignation of that area. We are finally also going to see a comet as well. Yikes. It's almost guaranteed a dead uh, machine gun here. Almost, almost for certain. Almost for certain. No, instead it's going to be the Panther who keeps, keeps throwing rounds with impunity into the Cromwell and decides to give his life for the Wehrmacht, so uh, El Padre is certainly not in a particularly wonderful position here. Austin, in the meantime, though, will get in behind and might be able to take out the anti-tank gun for the moment. Yes, he does, but he's probably going to pay for it with his life. 
What a poor, poor Austin that will be. He was a noble gentleman. Very strange to think also that this panther up here is actually not even dead yet. Not dead at all. Post Grenadiers have come out. I've got to throw down a Panzer Faust. No, they're not. And indeed, we are going to see everything that's German in the middle part of the field it needs to book it out of there now. Even more so is going to be a truly dead Panther now as Cromwell sneaks in behind to put the finishing dagger thrust into the unprotected rear there. Play match is throwing around to the middle part of the field. Probably going to see the death as MG 34. Uh, th excuse me, 34 team. Yep, there he goes. Poor lads. And El Padre, which had been, who had been exp um, enjoying a supremely big army lead for quite a bit of time here, is now significantly underneath his opponent. Volksgrenz throwing a Panzerfaust impotently into this Comet tank. The Comet's kind of laughs at him. And in the meantime, a Bren gun had been dropped. The infantry section just kind of picks it right back up super, super quickly. Neither individual seems really, really forgiving of the fact of the mistakes they're making. And yes, there are some here and there, but on the whole, you know, it could be, could be a heck of a lot worse. Yes, that land mattress was pretty uh, impressive right there, getting a th whole three kills. Um, but the sniper play could definitely have been better coming out Enemy from Scrum Panther. Now, it's going to be another Rakettenwerfer coming out for the Germans. I'm not entirely sure why he's going for Rakettenwerfer. Um, never mind, I do. It's a stopgap measure to help him push back all three of these armored tanks, armored vehicles from the Brits when he brings in... Um, brings in what's the term we're looking for here. How would that Rakettin River miss twice? He's got four stars of veterancy. His accuracy should be impeccable. Um, brings in that... Wow, King Tiger. There we go. I was having such a brain fart there, guys. Please excuse me. Enemy threatening a capture point. Now, these Volks Grenadiers are suppressing. They're going to get pinned almost immediately. And it was not going to be helped by the assistance of these Royal Engineers who are going to be suppressed in return. So... Super, super lucky thing happening there. And now El Padre, I believe, is just going to kill time until he made that KT in. Um, nothing's got a whole lot of it. 209 to 325. Time is getting more and more precious as we speak. <laughs> Excuse me. The enemy are 200 points. Any day now. Rakettin Verfers are back in base, except for this one out here. He's got four stars of veterancy, which almost never, ever happens. And he's not going to get any rounds off. He's going to be just a little bit out of position. Crews are ready to carry out emergency vehicle repairs. And the south is mine that's been there the entire time. I think backfires. And it takes out a couple of Jaegers. And oh no. Could this be the death of the Shred Panzer headquarters after so long? Maybe it could, maybe it couldn't. Never mind, there it goes, folks. So really, um, El Padre's got one hope and prayer here, and that is to have that KT be a vicious, vicious beast. These Volksgrenz are getting hammered. But we're getting in every direction, guys. This could be exactly what uh, was needed to get him back into this. Rear armor hit here, rear armor hit there. Rear armor hits everywhere. Where's that last one? He's, he's setting up onto... That other Cromwell. To take it. Okay, so he's lost. He's lost a bit. But, um, not devastatingly so. And how is your barrage? Comes down. Surprisingly enough, actually hits the Cromwell. Doesn't quite take it out, though. That thing is a very, very durable piece of machinery. And El Padre is trying very, very hard to not lose all these tickets before he can get that KT on the field. That thing's gonna be coming awfully slow here. Nevertheless, he manages to take with the Storm Pios in the north, and he's got this prowling Rakettin for forgetting up there, so he can put a round or two into the back of this particular Cromwell. And I believe he's going to get it, too, so let's just uh, get a nice little 
shot here. Dun dun dun. Dun 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 dun. Especially we're playing Jaws theme right now. Dun, 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 dun. Pushing things out of his way. Not allowing anything to come between him and his prey. The Royal Engineers are going to be engaging the Strom Pios as well as everything else. To, abusing some of the Strom Pios on retreat. Oh, 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 that was painful. That was so close. Um, that's... <laughs> was super lucky for Storm Panther and super unlucky um, for El Padre. Mill bomb going out points. though, not going to do any kind of damage whatsoever to these guys. Infiltration Commander is going to get torn up, but good on retreat. Vet five, a nice one. Yeah, it was pretty darn good. And where is that King Tiger? Point is Happening very, very soon, I should think. Now, he doesn't want to go and take back that Raketenver for as good as that might be. Mostly because um, he'd be giving up his fully vetted up squad of Volks Grenadiers. And at this point, yikes, this Jaeger Lights are getting hammered as well. He's going to get out of the beaten zone. I think time to retreat. Yep, there he goes. We're losing a capture point. Whew, that was close. But here is the KT. Um, that beautiful, beautiful beast is coming in right now. What does it say on there? Deutschland, okay. Um, for Cat Rivers in the meantime, we'll put a initial gun line and kind of draw in the Cromwells. They're going to do this whole light cavalry charge. They're going to find out that their doom is pretty darn close here. Not going to help them even more the fact that they're kind of weaseling in and out of that attack range. I think one of them has gone down as a vent, the most vetted up one. No, it's not, but he will go down in just a second here. No, KT saves him. And this gorgeous, gorgeous piece of German machinery might be enough to turn the tide on Strem Panthers ever so seemingly victorious. The enemy have destroyed Armored Brigade. Position. And shockingly enough, folks, we are going to see that uh, El Padre has pushed back and seized two, con uh, two VPs, slowly draining points away from the Brits. And indeed, all the Brits are hiding in the northern part of the map. They are so terrified that their tanks might get picked off here. And I think that was a minor mistake. Yes. Um, vehicle crew repairs. Okay, so he's just going to smoke up everything in the north and prep for a big, big push with them. Now, there's only two Rakettans in, and coupled with this KT... That might be enough. It might be enough to deflect the British land ship armada. Our capture point. They're trying to take it. They have 100 points remaining. Don't know if at this point the Brits can just keep spreading the field on the Germans. I'm not sure the Germans can do a whole lot with it. We are going to see in the meantime, though, once I got some S mines, nope, shoe mines coming out there. S mines be the wrong thing altogether. Okay, allowing that Vickers to get up into position, and not going to be able to suppress everything he needs to suppress. He's going to do some good damage, but not a lot of it. In the meantime, KT's going to laugh and start honing all of his opponents here. And indeed, these infiltration commandos are going to threaten to capture something, and then realize the folly of such a maneuver. And the KT kind of giggles and laughs and throws another round down range. Now, I'm surprised to see that we haven't seen another um, barrage coming out from this land mattress. Instead, we're seeing some attack grounds coming out from the Cromwell, which I always hated that particular tactic, even if it does occasionally work. Enemy down to 75 points. Also worth noting in the meantime that I don't know if the KT is going to be able to turn this around by himself. It doesn't look like he's able to take out all the necessary opponents here. And indeed, if this Raket River goes down, that's still a very, very, very vital piece of the German war machine. Oil Engineer goes, as does the Raket. And we're going to see a big, big flank happening over here at the same time, too. This KT is forced come about to deal with its tormentors. The only plus here is that one Cromwell is extremely damaged. It has an engine crit already, but um, it doesn't seem to be 
any salve in the wound for El Padre's King Tiger might be more than enough just to take him out with this brush. And somehow these rounds just keep missing. Oh my gosh. Missing or pinging off. Two Cromwells go down. This last Cromwell is not penetrating no matter how close he is. And this is just a very, very poor death if this is what kills. Strum Panthers, tank force, main gun destroyed. And guys, oh my god. Sturm Panther has just dropped like 30 army supply. The enemy destroyed a vehicle. And I've seen less bounces in the Super Bowl factory. Wow. Wow, so El Padre is just sort of somehow praying to certain deities to keep him alive. And yeah, I'd agree. Definitely unlucky. And how many bounces? That was literally probably 15 bounces. Assault grenades coming out in the meantime. Going to do some work, I think. Nope, just going to push off machine guns, and that's more than enough that's needed. Jaeger Light's going to snipe off a couple of units here or there. And now calling in the Ostwind to help complete the victory. I think the Germans might be able to take this map. Now the whole um, infiltration grenade assault is not going to be up for a bit of time yet. It'll be good for these guys to get out of there. Yes, there they go. Folks, Grenz in the meantime might be able to push back the infiltration commandos. Mill bomb goes out in retaliation. Doesn't quite get the damage he's looking to get though either. And these Royal Engineers, brave and plucky, are going to charge forwards. And you realize, wait a second, that's probably a bad idea. Yep, there's another comment, folks. So that guy is charging forwards, but the KT gets super, super built, super, super quickly. We finally get some mechanics out of that. Yes, we did. So Sturm Pios and the mechanics alike going to basically take out this brave, brave comet. No, he gets away in time. But it did allow this land to get taken out and captured by the Germans. And that's something you never want to see. Six Pounder, in the meantime, will try engaging this Osfund. And El Padre is not, unfortunately, staying on top of his micro with... Oh, there we go. There we go. Land mattress though firing back to the base. Doesn't quite hit anything. Even if he loses the land mattress here, it's not a huge deal for him. KT realizes in the meantime, wait a second, I have a nice a juicy target right here. Six pounder goes down because of the kind attention of these Volksgrens from behind. And even if these Volksgrens go down, I think the KT might be able to win this now. He's starting to get bounces now though too. And uh, unfortunately for the Comet tank, this whole smoke shell is not going to be able to do a whole lot for him. And indeed, what happened, a very, very clear Strand Panther game has, yep, has gone horribly, horribly wrong. And I wonder if this him is going to tap out at what the deal is. I don't know. I don't know. But I do know, ladies and gentlemen, that King Tiger's got to be the luckiest son of a gun in the world. In the south is, um, <laughs> in the south again, we will see this dumb trench is still up and running. And this Vickers is here trying to cover everything up. I'll put a fair amount of firepower in, but, uh, not really going to be that much of an issue. I mean, geez, the Germans are getting a trip cap. He's going to be down to a dual cap in just a second here. And imagine the Austin's going to come down to the south and do the dirty on the surviving Vickers crew members, even if they take this position. It's not going to be enough for him, and indeed he's going to get pushed out by the destruction of this trench. A very, very quick retreat happening. Good idea if I get picked off on the um, retreat path here. And you hate to see that happen, but every now and again, RNG Jesus comes down from heaven and just saves one player. Not because he wants to, but because that's how the game is played every now and again. Black Panther, surprisingly enough, though, does not take down the Vickers on retreat. Now... Volksgrens also throw out a Panzer Faust and don't manage to even damage the tank. Uh, and instead, lose two models and a very, very unlucky shot there as well. Land Mattress is recaptured and re-slaughtered, I dare say. Yep, there he goes. Six pounders putting rounds into the King Tiger, but uh, it's much easier to thread the eye of a needle with a camel than to um, effectively Yikes! Penetrate a KT with a six-pounder. 
And yep, here's one of those movements again where it doesn't matter who he is, what he is, that King Tiger is now a killer like crazy. The five star for Kettenberger. Five star for Kettenberger there, folks. In the north, we're going to see um, Jaegers are going to be coming up against these infiltration commandos. He's not going to shoot back and forth. I don't know if this is a gentleman's agreement or what this is. But apparently, the infiltration commandos did not get the memo. They're going to pour fire into those Jaegers who are just not shooting back. Folks, Grenz could be throwing uh, grenades right now, but they're not going to. Instead, they're just going to start throwing rounds the old-fashioned way. Ship cap again for the Germans, and that's pretty much going to be all she wrote, it seems, folks. I don't know if Shrimp is going to continue to play this out or what it is, but Jaegers are being popped out now. Where are they coming out? Ah, in the north. So he lost his Jaeger squad because he wasn't shooting. Strange, strange, strange. But maybe the KT is going to get revenge for his lost comrades? I don't know. Yep, there he goes. So inexorably, it sort of feels like a Death Star is kind of lining up on his targets here. Oh my gosh. Tulip rockets are not being launched. Why are they not being launched? Now's the time. We're also going to see in the meantime infantry section with Piots. Just an interesting decision there. You don't often see that happen. And El Padre is just, there we go. There we go. His um, tank gets hammered pretty hardcore. Uh, but we're going to start to see Faust's galore, and it doesn't matter how good your tank is if you can't survive the attention of the enemy. Now, question is, can these Piots take out the tank? I don't think so. It's going to be a very tall order. Throwing rounds hardcore, and never mind, there he goes. That is gone. So 31 to 165, could we see Sturm Pio, excuse me, Sturm Panther get back in this? I don't think so, but I've been wrong before. The squad's gone. But in the meantime, we will see another infantry section goes down to fairly fed it up one as well, so it's always what you hate to see. This Jaeger Light Squad is gonna probably get picked off on retreat. No, he does not. He makes it away, just barely. Austin's gonna charge back to the north. And Sturm Panther just continues to throw Cromwell after Cromwell into the fray. But the infantry, which had been doing such a good job, is ailing badly. And everywhere you look, you see just death happening. It's just, it's, it's almost too much to watch. These poor infantry, poor um, British players, excuse me, br British troops all over the place is getting taken out. And now a Piat goes over to the Germans. It's not a desperately kind of strange thing that might occur, but it could be kind of fun nonetheless. Jaegers do come out. They're going to pick up that Piat. Yes, they are. I gotta recap the north as well. Center might go down to this Royal Engineer squad. Um, and this five star Rakatenberg might finally get taken out. I don't know. One more round. No, never mind. He takes out the comet that was brought in. Yep, that is true. For some reason, I have noticed that a lot of the Anti-tank guns for the Brits have just missed like crazy, but for the Germans, it's like magnetic. Enemy causing trouble. And that guy's done a brilliant job as well, so hats off to that guy. Austin again getting chased back. Not sure why, and there it is again, the Allied tank crush. It's been insane in this game. Three of them, just without even trying. Just wherever he goes, just kind of crushes everything. Once again, these brave Volksbands come down. They can throw off one Panzerfaust and they can book it out of there, I would hope. Yep, there they go. Very hard to crush, but does not hang around to be crushed. Now, is this the one with the Piot? No, it's not. The other Jaeger lights are the ones with the Piots. That would be kind of fun to watch as well. No, in the meantime, we'll see. Uh, Vickers will get cooked to death. Uh, not going to make it out of there alive, I don't think, if he stays. No, he finally makes it away. And Jaegers are going to get hit pretty hardcore here, and wow. You know, he complains sometimes about the, the RNG going on, but uh, infantry just gets murderized by both sides' tanks. But I'm wondering, are we just waiting to see perhaps like another KT being brought on the field? I don't know if that would even be an opportunity for him, but it could, I suppose. Judging by the way he's not bringing other infantry, that sounds like a fairly decent uh, supposition. 
Gettinger for in the meantime throws one round into the back of this Cromwell, even though he's coming under fire from infantry. And no, he's not going to do it. Instead, he's going to get out of there right now. So 31 to 101. This game's been going on for a very, very long period of time here. We're down to 100 points now. Sorry. And it doesn't seem... Oh my gosh, main gun destroyed by the Ostfind? That's embarrassing. That is very, very embarrassing. This literally is a gadfly. It's kind of nibbling you to death. But you know, I suppose that could happen. It's very, 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 very unlikely. And the Piot throws in, gets thrown in there, and that guy gets unfortunately launched into orbit. So that's uh, some bad luck there. But the Koenigstiga is back on the field. I'm going to speed this up, guys, because it's more than done at this point. Koenigstiga charges forwards, but I can't help but see that this is all over. Machine gun's going to try to stand up to uh, negative attention here. It's not going to be a great idea. I keep waiting. Where's the Panzerfaust coming out? Pretty darn soon. Very, very soon, I would suggest. And these guys have been since the beginning part of the game. 26 and 24 kills. Just all infantry? On um, one squad it is, anyway. On the other? Yes, it's just been infantry galore, my friends. And where are those rockets going? Oh, the center part of the map. Trying to take out, remove anything possible. But no, instead it's the Royal Engineers who go down to the north. And that was, no, oh, excuse me, the infantry section. That was a Piat squad, too. So all that remains, squad's gone. another Royal Engineers goes down, infiltration command is being used, so he's going to do some desperate kind of like, I'm going to take this back away from you super, super quickly. Not that's going to do him a lot of good. Because while he takes the north, Germans take the center part of the map, and his KT can do whatever he wants to. He's going to speed this up to times four here. Uh, we are going to see that that Cromwell has gone down, which means that the Raquette Prefer had a nice set of... Uh, rear shots into it. There it is right there. And that's going to be pretty much all she wrote, my friends. So, despite going down a huge number of tickets, El Padre gets helped out by very, very lucky royal, um, excuse me, random, random number generation. And there goes that one as well. And then Austin comes on the field just in time for the victory dance. And that KT bounce did win the game. So unlucky loss to Strand Panther, lucky win to El Padre, and thanks so much for tuning in to us for this, guys. That was a doozy of a game, 59 minutes long, just shy of an hour. Nevertheless, I'll see you guys all soon. This is Con Ulrich signing off. Take it easy, everybody.